What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how to build this classic mid-century modern slatted bench. This is modeled after the famous Nelson bench designed by George Nelson, still being produced today by Herman Miller. It's a pretty simple build. I used a lot of power tools in this video, but you could build this whole thing really with a circular saw and a drill. You could build this out of all one by twos and one by threes from the home center as well. So a really great project if you like this kind of modern style and kind of will take your joinery and that kind of thing to the next level. So let's go ahead and get started. So I built this project out of eight quarter hard maple and oak, but you could also just use a mix of one by twos and one by threes from your local home center if you don't have the equipment to mill rough lumber. It was a ton of work ripping down the maple strips and I would have just bought the lumber already milled if I didn't already have the maple on hand. I ripped the maple into three quarter inch by inch and a half strips on the table saw. And if you're using one by twos, you'll want to purchase seven eight foot long one by twos for the bench top and cut them into 48 inch long pieces. Once I milled the maple into strips, I cut two of the strips into 24 inch long sections. And these short sections make up the horizontal cross members that run at each end and in the middle of the bench top. The middle cross member is twice as wide as you can see here, so I also glued up a pair of these cross members. I built three of these benches in total, so that's why you see me gluing up so many pieces here. With the pieces cut to size, it was time to cut the dados into the pieces. To do this, I made a little jig using a scrap piece of plywood. I set up my dado stack to be the exact width of the slats, three quarters of an inch in my case, and then set the height to exactly half of the height of the slat, which is also three quarters of an inch. Once this was set, I cut one pass into the temporary fence and then added a small offcut from the slats to this opening. This offcut will serve as a stop block on the jig. I then used a three quarter inch spacer block to space this offcut three quarters of an inch from the dado stack. And with the spacing correct, I screwed the fence to the miter gauge and was ready to go. Now, if you don't have access to a table saw, you could do all of this with a circular saw and a speed square as well. So the way this jig works is as follows. You make a cut with the piece pushed up against the stop block. Once this cut has been made, you slide the workpiece over, putting the dado you just cut onto the block, and this sets the workpiece's position to exactly three quarters of an inch from the blade. So you just make another pass, then remove the workpiece over again, and repeat this until you have enough dados for the number of slats your bench top has, 11 in my case. Also, as you can see, I have all of the cross members taped together so that they can all be cut at the same time. Once all the dados were cut, I cut the cross members to their final length, 15 and 3 quarters of an inch in my case, at the miter saw. With the cross members cut, it was then time to make the matching cuts into the slats. So there's one notch on each end of the slat and a double wide notch in the middle of the slat. So first I cut the notches on each end of the slats. I just put a clamp on my miter gauge's finch, which served as a stop block. With the notches cut on each end of the slats, I added a block to the table saw's fence and set the distance from this block to the dado stack to be exactly the length of half of the slat minus three quarters of an inch. This way, when I made a cut, it cut a dado, then I could flip the piece around, make another cut, and it left me with a double wide dado. So it's best to sneak up on the width of this double wide dado. You wanna err on the side of too narrow because you can't very easily put wood back. So make the width of the dado just wide enough for your center cross member to fit snugly. As I said earlier, I made three of these benches, so I had a lot of slats to cut. With the stop system set up though, it went pretty quickly. After making all my dado cuts, I ended up with a three quarter inch by three quarter inch notch on each end, and then a inch and a half by three quarter inch dado in the center of the slat. So next I needed to sand off any of the burn marks left by the table saw blade during ripping, I used my drum sander for this, which is the perfect tool for this job. My drum sander is the Supermax 1938, and it was provided by my friends at Acme Tools, the sponsor of today's video. I highly encourage you to check them out if you're thinking of purchasing any power tools or other items for your shop. Acme Tools is one of the premier retailers of tools and equipment in the nation, and they've served the contractor, woodworker, and do-it-yourselfer with a wide selection of tools and equipment from all the major manufacturers since 1948. I'll have a link to the Acme Tools website in the video description below if you'd like to learn more. So with all the pieces for the bench top cut to size and sanded, it was time for assembly. 
The glue up for this bench top is a little stressful since there are so many individual joints and I decided to tackle it in three phases. So first I glued the center cross member and the slats together. Next I moved on to one end of the bench top. I didn't go crazy with the glue because of the squeeze out. I got the joint started with the mallet and then applied clamping pressure lengthwise to pull the cross member tight against the slats. Next I used a hardwood call across the top of the slats. I added a clamp widthwise to close up any gaps in that direction and finally added one more clamp in the middle just to pull all the slats closed. Man, <laughs> that was a stressful glue up. Then I repeated the whole process on the other end once the glue had dried on that first end. So next came a ton of sanding. I first used the drum sander again to get everything flushed up. If you don't have a drum sander, you could use a belt sander to do that. And then I spent a lot of time with the random orbit sander and just hand sanding to get everything smoothed out. I also used a little trick to sand in between the slats. I took a piece of three quarter inch plywood, which is slightly less than three quarters of an inch wide and attached some sandpaper to one edge of it with spray adhesive. I cut away the excess and I was left with the perfect tool for sanding between the slats and the cross members. Finally, I eased all the edges, making sure to still leave them nice and crisp. So with the bench top essentially done, I moved on to the legs. I decided to use this huge chunk of oak I had laying around, but I based the size of the legs on a standard 1x3. So if you're buying 1x3s for both legs, you'll need two 6 foot long 1x3s. So I milled the chunk of oak to size with the bandsaw, jointer, table saw, and planer, and then moved on to cutting the leg pieces to length. The legs are pretty simple. They're just made up of four pieces that are joined with screws and dowels. All the pieces are cut with an eight degree bevel on each end and the top piece and two sides are 14 inches long. And then I just cut the bottom piece to fit. So the top and bottom pieces have an eight degree bevel cut angled towards each other on each end. And the side pieces have the bevel cut parallel to each other on each end. So to assemble the legs, I pre-drilled and countersunk holes and then added two inch screws. I added a little paste wax to allow the screws to be driven more easily. And I used a clamp to keep the pieces flushed up during assembly. With the top piece and side pieces assembled, I then marked a line on the bottom piece and cut it to the exact length at the miter saw. And this just helps to account for any errors that might've been made while cutting the other pieces or during assembly. So I first labeled all the pieces and then disassembled them, added glue and reassembled them. This way I knew they went back in the right place. And next I added a three eighths inch dowel in each corner to reinforce the joints. Probably wasn't totally necessary, but it adds quite a bit of strength to these butt joints, which are fairly weak. I also plugged the screw holes with the same dowel. With all the holes plugged, I flushed everything up with a low angle jack plane, which smoothed everything out really nicely. And I sanded all the sides of the legs and chamfered the bottom edges of the legs with a block plane. So the legs on the Nelson bench are traditionally ebonized, which is basically just stained black. And I decided to try using a leather die to do this. It worked really well on the test pieces I tried, so I gave it a shot on the legs and I'll have a link to the exact die I use in the video description below. It goes on really easily and I just use the included applicator to kind of wipe it on. I added one coat, let it dry for about an hour, then came back and added another coat. And I let the second coat dry for about an hour and then wiped off any excess stain and let it dry overnight. Then I added a coat of spray shellac to kind of seal the die and then finally added two coats of spray polyurethane to finish the legs. So for finish on the bench top, I used an aerosol pre-catalyzed lacquer. I sprayed on a coat, let it dry for about 30 minutes, sanded with 320 grit sandpaper, and then repeated this step for two more coats. I let all these finishes dry at least overnight and then attached the legs to the bench top from below using inch and a quarter screws. I pre-drilled and countersunk the holes, paying close attention to make sure I drilled into the slats squarely, and I used about six screws per leg. With the legs attached, the bench was done.
All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a great project. I am extremely happy with the way it turned out. Uh, it basically looks just like I was hoping it would, so that's awesome. The leather dye seems to have worked out really well on the oak. I'll kind of keep you guys updated as time goes on just to make sure nothing weird happens with it, but I don't anticipate it, that happening. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you don't already, maybe get subscribed. I put out new projects like this every Tuesday. Also, I have links to all the materials and supplies in the build article which is linked to in the video description below. And last, you can support me a little further on Patreon if you want to get some behind the scenes stuff, get some free plans, all that kind of stuff. It's patreon.com slash craftedworkshop. All right, thanks again for watching guys and until next time, happy building.